Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub, and on this episode, we're going to learn about oscilloscopes. So let's start this tutorial with a little comparison. You're probably already familiar with a multimeter, but let's quickly review because I think it will help you understand the oscilloscope a little better. When measuring voltage, a multimeter takes a single point-in-time reading of a circuit. For example, when connected to this battery, it shows 9 volt DC on the screen. If we hook the multimeter to our mains power supply, it shows somewhere around 120 volt AC on the screen, depending on where you live. Again, these are point-in-time readings. And the truth is, if you measure AC voltage over time, it's not outputting 120 volts at all. This is where the oscilloscope comes in. Oscilloscopes allow you to measure a circuit's voltage over time, taking many thousands of readings and plotting them on the screen over that time. Many modern oscilloscopes can even write this output to a file for later in-depth review on a PC or a Mac. You can see here when I connect this oscilloscope to 120 volt AC mains in my house, that the voltage isn't 120 volts after all. It is constantly changing in this waveform pattern. It's constantly changing from negative 170 to positive 170 volts. And that's why it's called alternating current. A multimeter will just show the average reading of this output in real time, um, or more accurately, the root mean square or RMS reading. It takes an oscilloscope to see what's actually happening. Now let's take a look at the oscilloscope's display so that we can understand exactly what is being represented. The display is made up of a grid. The size of this grid varies by oscilloscope brand and model, but they all basically work the same. The horizontal axis of the grid represents the time scale, while the vertical axis of the grid represents the voltage reading. Each box in this grid is called a division. These divisions are configurable with the knobs on the front of the oscilloscope so that they can represent larger or smaller scales. By turning the horizontal knob, for example, we can make the divisions represent a longer or shorter period of time. Or, by turning the vertical knob, we can make the divisions represent a smaller or larger voltage scale. This is in effect a zoom feature of the oscilloscope, allowing you to zoom in and out of the signal you are capturing. Now let's take a little deeper look at these waveforms. If we look back at the signal from our standard 120 volt house mains, you can see it forms a nice wave pattern. This pattern is cycling at 60 times a second between negative 170 and positive 170 volts. This type of waveform is called a sine wave. Sine waves represent analog signals. Let's take this Arduino and connect one of its digital output pens to the oscilloscope. I'm going to set it to light an LED, but only at 50% brightness. What we see on the oscilloscope is quite different. If you're thinking it looks like it's just cycling off and on the power, but keeping the voltage at 5 volts, you're exactly correct. This type of signal is called a square wave, and it will typically cycle by outputting 0 volts for a period of time, followed by a specific voltage such as 5 volts for the same period of time. Now, what do you think this voltage reading will be if we hook the circuit up to our multimeter? If you guessed approximately 2.5 volts, you would be correct. A 5 volt square wave voltage at a 50% duty cycle will produce 2.5 volts RMS. If I change the duty cycle by setting the PWM output on the Arduino to just 10%, you'll see exactly what you'd expect. Now the voltage is only 5 volts for 10% of the time and 0 volts for 90% of the time. And this will translate to just under 1 volt on our multimeter. There are two more knobs on the oscilloscope that are commonly used. These are the horizontal and vertical positioning knobs. Turning the horizontal position knob lets you adjust where the waveform starts and stops on the screen and allows you to line it up with the divisions should you choose. Turning the vertical position knob allows you to move the signal higher or lower on the grid, making some signals easier to read. Oscilloscopes generally have between 1 and 4 channels. The probes connect to these channels using standard BNC connectors. Having more than one channel, of course, allows you to view more than one signal on the screen at the same time. Each channel will be represented by a different color. The probes have some pretty cool features on their own. First, most probes have a 1x, 10x button on the side of them. 
Moving the button to the 10x position attenuates the probe by a factor of 10. This is done in most brands by connecting an internal 9 mega ohm resistor. You'll most likely use your probe in the 10x mode most of the time as it's the more accurate setting for most applications. At the end of the probe you'll see the tip and ground lead. The ground lead of course connects to the ground on the device you're probing, or earth ground if your device has one. The tip of the probe opens by squeezing it, and offers a spring-loaded hook to easily connect to wires or pins in your electronic devices. With most probes, you can remove the hook by pulling gently to reveal a single pin probe that can reach into some hard-to-get places. This is a super handy feature. So an oscilloscope can come in handy in everyday life. Let's say that you have an Arduino Uno and you think the oscillator might be bad. Well, it's super easy to check that on the oscilloscope. All you have to do to check the oscillator crystal is to measure it with a scope. First, connect the ground lead to any ground on the Arduino. Now, using the oscilloscope probe with the spring hook removed, use the tip of the probe to touch the solder pad on the output side of the crystal. You should see a 16 MHz oscillation on the oscilloscope. If you see any other value, it's likely the crystal needs to be replaced. So what if you suspect there's a problem with the SID chip on your trusty Commodore 64 and you want to check the output line? You can do that with an oscilloscope. Carefully open the Commodore 64, making sure to disconnect the power LED so it doesn't get hung on anything. I just used FB64 to mount the Standing Stones disc image and load the game. It's got some pretty cool intro music we can use. Now, just touch the probe pin to the SID chip's output line. It's pin number 27 and you should see some fantastic waveforms represented on the oscilloscope's display that seem to match the music you hear. Well that's all I have for you in this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.